Hey guys, and welcome to another Stacklin Studio experience. Uh, I have OBS over that way, or no, that way, that way. I have OBS over that way, I think. Uh, always get mixed up with all these cameras, but today we are going to be seeing how much of a feminist, of a feminazi I am. And I'm going to explain my decisions, either yes or no, to you guys, and I'm going to explain in much needed detail of why something, in my opinion, is okay or not okay. So let's go ahead and get into it, because I, f I watched Baring's video on it, and you can check out his channel down below. And honestly, I love Baring, but some of the points that he made I wasn't so sure about myself, because it's just like, they're good points, but he doesn't he doesn't really explain it a lot because he isn't American. He is Australian, so he doesn't know American culture like I do because, you know, I'm an American. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Now, I am sorry if this hurts anyone's beefies as the intro indicated. So let's go ahead and get into it. Alright, so I've blown it up so that we can see about four or five questions at a time, and I can talk about them. Uh, so let's go ahead and I guess get started with this. So the first one, I would be willing to give up some of my salary if I had to. Oh, I have to be careful how far I go. There we go. Uh, I would be willing to give up some of my salary if I had to so that equal pay in the workplace could be a reality. This is very simple. It's simply they're asking if you would uh, support unions, labor unions, and absolutely I would. Labor unions take a slice of, you know, your pay to make sure that everyone gets equal pay. Um, now, it does come into play of is the people who are my coworkers, do they all deserve equal pay as I do? Um, and, like, I don't believe that a manager who has been there for five years uh, should get the same pay as I get. That doesn't make sense at all. So uh, for this one, I would say yes, I do agree with labor unions and how they try to standardize payments for each level, whether you're a entry level, uh, mid-tier, high-end, or management. Uh, I, I believe that as far as what I've seen in my local labor unions, they, they try and keep that as that little stair step that you can climb up. Like it's not a question of if you can climb up, it's a question of when you climb up that ladder. So yes, I would I would do that. And uh, I do believe that men and women should be considered equals, although more free, more recently, women and men have not been being considered equals. And frankly, this is due to multiple issues that are out there. And one of the biggest issues is that people, both men and women, treat the other like shit because of the other one treating the other one like shit. So it's a big issue that I feel that needs to be addressed at some point, but it probably won't ever be addressed, so I've kind of given up hope on it. But yes, I believe that both men and women should be treated as human beings, not as separate people, as separate genders, but as one group, as one human. So... I can't help but be bothered when a song includes misogynistic lyrics, even when I otherwise like the song. I don't really care. I don't really listen to songs with lyrics, so it's kind of hard for me to say that. Um, but, you know, I watch, I listen to things like Ganjaman, so that would automatically take me out of that because it doesn't bother me. Because I don't, and it's not that I've been desensitized, it's the fact that I just don't care. Because I don't feel that I should care if, you know, the the songwriter says dick, 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 dick all over the place, I don't care. Because, frankly, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter if they say puss all over, all over the place, cunt, douche, whatever. It doesn't matter. As long as the song is good and the, the beat's good, I guess I don't really care. So, um, I know who Bell Hooks is. No idea who the fuck she or he is. No idea. Uh, intersectional feminism, no idea. I don't use the phrase, hey guys, when referring to a group of people that includes men and women. I do that all the time. I did it at the beginning of this video. So, I don't really care. 
Um, I have taken a woman and or gender class studies. And kind of, I studied uh, in my personal time because I believe that's the better way to study. So yes, I would say yes, I have taken a women's and or gender studies class. Um, I think it's important to encourage girls to pursue science and uh, math as a career. I mean, there are already a bunch in math and science, so I don't think that it would be useful for them to be in that field. I do feel that uh, more quote-unquote manly roles, such as mechanic and stuff like that, do need a lot more women because uh, women don't, like, they're just as capable as men to get their hands dirty. I personally don't like getting my hands dirty. So I chose my career field in networking. Does that mean I'm wrong? Not really. I just feel that that's how I want to work my life. So I feel that every woman, man, or child should live their life the way that they want to. I think it's, oh, right. Uh, women should be applied, uh, allowed to apply for a job if they fulfill 60% of the job requirements. I think that even if they if they fulfill 0% but 100% promise that they will get that by the time that they're uh, that they get hired. I mean, that's how uh Norway works. If you don't have the requirements yet, um but you are working towards getting them and you'll have them by the time a potential interview comes up, you simply put that in your cover letter and you'll probably end up getting an interview. So, I don't see why that's an issue here in America, but uh, yeah, okay. Um, I think we could change, we should change the bathroom symbol. No, I, I really don't because people have been raised around those symbols that women, you know, the women's bathroom is a uh, dress and then the men's. Like, how else would you do it? Color code it and then instead of calling it men's and women's, what would you do? Just put it pink and blue? then that would be, you know, still that gender ra uh, super rationalism that's going on that uh, people are saying, oh, well, you're assuming that I like the color pink and I like blue. That it still doesn't, like, you're never going to win either way, so just leave it the way it is and hopefully less people will bitch. Um, I believe that trans people should, no, I do not feel that will hap that should be happening because, um, the the problem that they're going to have with that is they are going to, you know, have people who have men who, or women, I can't say men or women, I can't say that it's one or the other, but there could be potential rape, rape cases in that scenario, and that just is not okay. Um, because if you, if you separate the two, uh, there won't be as much of that issue, um, such as like in Catholic or Christian schools there that have uh, separate, not co-ed education, but separate education for men and women, uh, boys and girls. Those two educations, in, on top of the religion aspect that says you aren't supposed to have sex without being married, uh, that part, there has been proven that there, that is more useful as far as uh, not having, you know, sexual relations with each other at a young age, such as, like, I knew someone in my middle school at the age of 11 to 13, and she was pregnant, um, or they were pregnant. I knew a group of girls who, between the ages of 11 and 13, they all got pregnant, and that was... I solely blame the education of our school system and the parents, but I also blame the co-ed education system. Uh, I do feel that if the education system was separated and we were taught more about each other and then slowly began to mingle in maybe one or two classes over time, slowly increasing the class workload until in high school we were completely co-ed, I think that would make it so that it would be a lot less difficult on us as teenagers, um, and we'd be able to hopefully hone our emotions uh, through other means, through actually mingling with students instead of just bumping into someone in the hallway and saying, hey, do you want to go fuck? That's kind of what 
our school system is now, and I understand that some teachers don't like talking about that, but the fact is that our school system is that. It's you bumped into someone in the hallway and say, yo, you want to fuck, and that's that. So uh, I do not believe that the bathroom thing should be a be, uh, thing. Uh, where was I? There we go. Uh, number 12. I believe that it's important for uh, to encourage women to negotiate. Absolutely, I think that both men and women need to negotiate their pay, um, whether it's uh, based on skill set or based on time that you've worked in that field, um, which I guess kind of now time worked in the field is your skill set. Um, but I do feel that it is important for everyone to uh, talk about their wages and talk about them publicly so that issues like this do not occur. Um, I believe Jennifer Lawrence should earn as much as her male co-stars. Yeah, I mean, if she puts out a good movie, I don't really know who Jennifer Lawrence is, um, but I do feel that uh, if any actor makes a movie just as good as another actor, they should get the same amount of uh, money. But I do understand that contracting and limitations in that because I, I have done a couple contracts before for uh, TV shows and stuff. But I, I do understand that. Um, so it, it does make sense to me. Um, I do not think a movie uh, should be released until it passes the Bechdel test. I don't know what the Bechdel test is. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pass on that one. Uh, number, uh, number 15. Okay. I believe that all genders are entitled to the same social and political rights. Absolutely. Uh, I can explain my 78 cents to the dollar is not a fully accurate description of the gender wage gap. Um, but see, 78 cents to the dollar is actually a, an accurate representation where women get 78 per, 78 cents. 78% of what a man gets, that does make sense, and uh, they would get treated 78% of a man, I would feel. Um, and that is an issue that needs to be addressed. So, um, no, I, I would say that 78% of a dollar is perfectly fine to describe the gender wage gap. Um, there we go. Uh, number 17. I believe that women who possess certain types of privilege are responsible for advocating for women who don't have their level of privilege. What privilege are we talking about? You know, your V card or what? I don't, I don't get that because that doesn't make any sense. Um, so no, um, I believe that every person is responsible for their own privilege and their own self. I don't know. I don't see that as a as an issue. Um, if I had a daughter, I would encourage her to be anything that she wanted to be. Absolutely. Um, I'd make it clear to my daughter uh, from an early age that her identity should never be defined by her relationship status. Um, see, this is a hard one because it's like you need to prepare them for the shitstorm that's going to come, but you need to tell them to act like themselves. Um, so, no, I'm actually going to pass on this one and not check it off because, honestly, if I had a daughter, I would tell her, you know, you are going to be treated like shit if you are a lesbian. I'm okay with that if you are, but the fact is that in today's society, you will be treated like shit because that is how our society sucks. And, frankly, that's just how most people are. I'm not saying that everyone is, but a lot of people treat gays differently. A lot of people treat trans differently. And frankly, I just don't think it's okay. I think, again, that we are all people, not not being, or not things. We're all different people. We're all humans. And I believe in the old-fashioned Star Trek saying, infinite possibilities in infinite diversity. Or infinite diversity and infinite possibilities. I, I always get them flipped around. Okay, so, yeah, no, I would totally uh, not. That wouldn't be fine. Um, I believe that it's important to compliment a woman's intelligence over her looks. I mean, if a woman comes up to me and looks nice, I usually don't say anything. So, if they do something, 
that's dumb too. Because also, if you start complimenting them on their intelligence, then you and yourself are saying that they're stupid normally, but they had a miracle breakthrough. So I think that is just kind of rude and inconsiderate. Um, I believe that a woman has the right to choose what happens to her body. Absolutely. I, I don't believe that, you know, anyone should force anyone to do anything. I mean, it's a right for a man to choose what they want to do with their body. I mean, obviously, if you're in a relationship, I definitely think that you should talk about it together with your spouse, but no. Um, in an incident of sexual assault against a female, I'm inclined to believe... No. I, I actually agree with Baring on this. That's assuming that... You're assuming that they are uh, innocent until proven guilty. Or, sorry, guilty until proven innocent. Um, that's, uh, that's not okay. I, I do believe the fact that uh, all, all assumably guilty parties should be held accountable, but they all should be held in like a holding chamber until uh, they can prove their innocence. But I do believe that even, say for example, uh, a woman gets raped, I believe that the raper and the, or the raped and the rapist both should be detained and a full investigation should ensue simply because it's not okay to assume that one is right and then one is wrong. It's not okay at all. Um, simply because it's, it blows my mind, but it's, it's not right to say that one did it and then the other one didn't. You are taking one's word over the other, and I believe that if both people were treated as criminals, then they both would be given equal opportunity to tell the truth and their side of the story, and then a judge and a jury should should issue the final verdict of whether it was rape, you know, consensual sex and consensual rape, or if it was uh, not in intended at all, or if it was a complete accident, maybe the person did not hear them. And I feel that the structure system for our current laws about sexual assault are much too strict because it's just like, oh, if you're drunk and you rape someone, it's either yes or no. There's no middle ground. There's no, oh, well, she was also drunk. I, I feel that there should be more checks and balances put into place to answer for the crime. I feel that there should be more questioning put into place instead of just, the the man did it and it's it's fine and even when there's a question of if the woman did it there's usually never a question if the woman did it it's always oh it's the the man asked for it um so honestly it's kind of shitty either way and i think that the law needs to be restructured as in this society um it's it has been restructured, I believe, since 2006, I think. So it definitely needs an update to now and today's policies and our minds that we use. So uh, Marlene uh, Dierich's influence on women's fashion, I have no idea. I know what a bad feminist is. Yes, feminazis. Um, I believe that women should be able to dress however they want, dictating how they are t uh, without dictating how they are treated by society. I, I'll leave this unchecked, but, you know, I will discuss it, as this whole video has been nothing but me discussing these. Um, I do feel that they should be able to dress however they want, but I also am a realist and I understand that they most likely will not be treated equal, um, because you have the point of oh, they're going to be, you know, if they dress slutty, they're going to be treated like sluts. And if they don't dress slutty, they're going to be treated like professionals. So at the end of the day, don't dress like a slut. Like, I, I, I get people who want to show it off, but if you don't want the attention, don't do it. It's just that simple. If you don't want to get cat called, don't egg people on, don't go near construction sites, don't go near all these other places that you know that are that you're going to get cat called from. 
you are just as you are just as human as I am. You can use your internal intellect and make up your mind on a decision that you want. If you, uh, for example, say, "Oh well, I I don't want to get catcalled," then don't wear slutty outfits. Don't wear tight wearing outfits. Don't act um, offended if you are out in public and someone does do it. Go the other way. Don't interact with them. Don't say, hey, motherfucker, I'm not like that. Don't, don't turn around and say that. Just ignore them. Because, honestly, that's the best policy is to ignore them. Let them have their laugh and go on with your day. Put on your big girl panties and fucking move on with your life. And yes, until you can do that, you are a girl to me. Because honestly, if you're going to sit there and do that, you have no, no right to talk to me about saying, about you being a girl. I'm sorry, that's, it's just not okay for you to, you know, create this division of like, oh, well, I wear this and this and this. Well, yes, you are going to be called out on it because of today's society. So, no, I'm going to leave that off. Um, I've never said that a woman asked for it, no. Um, I'm offended by catcalling. I just pretty much explained my feelings on catcalling. Um, I don't think that women should uh, give, give an, get VIP treatment at nightclubs and bars just for being women. I do agree. I think that men also, if someone's, uh, if a girl's harassing a man, I think that they should, you know, the security or bouncers should escort them out. I don't get why there are, you know, straight nightclubs for, that just have women and gay nightclubs that just have men. Like, it's, it's kind of a broken thing of, like, why aren't there mixed nightclubs that have men and women that women can go to? I'm sure that there are some women that are turned on by that. I don't think that that's okay. That there is just, you know, straight or gay nightclubs. Period. As far as I know, as far as I've done my research, which I could be wrong. I'm not. I'm not going to say that I'm not. Um, so, there's that. Um, I think pro- police. Uh, but uh, I think police brutality and its correlation with race is a feminist issue. No, I'm just going to skip right fucking by that. Um, I think we should stop. No. Um, I think we should stop. No. I have never... Oh, there. Okay. I have never called a woman bossy. No, I've called a woman bossy before. Um, my, my girlfriend's quite bossy sometimes, and she knows it, and that's fine. I mean, just because a woman's bossy means that she likes to have control. That's perfectly fine. Or, or no, I would need to leave that unchecked. Okay. Um, I think companies should offer more child-friendly time and uh, programs to women who are having children. I do believe that that's good. And, I mean, countries like Norway, again, um, they offer uh, a set maternity leave. They they offer, like, two or three months that you can stay off and you'll still get, like, depending on the company, you'll get either, you know, uh, a quarter of what you were salaried or you'll get barely anything, um, and you can choose to come back into work whenever you want. I think that that's a great policy, and also, you know, they are a very socialistic democracy government that offers choices and unions to pretty much every workforce. So, yes, I believe that that should be a thing in America. Again, leaning more towards uh, everyone needs to be in a union, because I personally feel that that the socialistic democracy of that is much better than the capitalistic if you miss a day you're fired policy that we currently have in America because yes if they fire you there are about a hundred other people that can fill your place especially if you work at a place like Walmart or McDonald's but the fact is that if they fire you they are missing out on your expertise as a person who has been in that workforce so I don't know, it's kind of a win-win, lose-lose situation for me. I believe that a woman should be offered the same uh, uh, opportunities for promotion as her male co-workers. Absolutely, I, I 
again, believe in that completely. Um, I believe that, uh, yes, hell yes. Because uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a poor man, so. Uh, women, yes, should have easy access. Um, uh, relationship, uh, domestic duty should be shared. I don't think that, like, I think should be is a harsh word. Um, I do feel that if you guys want to share the duties, sure. But if she wants to do the cleaning, then let her do the cleaning. If you want to do the cleaning, let you do the cleaning. I'm very defensive over my networking. So I, I would call that domestic duties because, you know, everyone needs a home network. So I'm not letting my girlfriend touch our home network. I'm going to route the whole fucking thing myself. So that would be just like asking you, if you are a man who likes tinkering with cars, would you like equal responsibility for that woman to take care of your car, but at the same time, when you want, that you want equal responsibility to take her hobby over. So it's like, because honestly, cleaning house is a hobby. You can choose not to do it. I mean, Sure, you'll live like a pigsty, but you can choose not to do it. And I've seen hundreds of people who do it in America every day. But the fact is that if you choose not to do it, then it won't get done, and then one of you will decide to do it. Or if you are in a relationship where you both like working together, you both will decide to do it. So I think that this is something that should be... It should be up to the relationship because if one likes to do them, the other one doesn't. Let let it fly. Let it just let the relationship take control because I don't I don't get it. Um, uh, number thirty eight. I think that a couple should have equal responsibility over aesthetic clean and cleanliness of the home. That's the same thing as number thirty seven essentially. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I feel that those two are the same, so I'm not going to answer either one of those. Um, I believe that, a, that the man should be encouraged to be involved and make choices in the wedding planning process. I mean, the whole, uh, like, the whole American wedding thing is just fake anyway, so sure, why not? Uh... I believe that men and women have the same emotional strength. No, usually women have more emotional strength than men because they can handle a bunch of different... Uh, God, I don't know what's in my eye. Uh, I don't believe... I, I don't believe that men have the same um, emotional strength as women because men have a much lesser emotional strength because we can hide our emotions, but later on we're going to break down and maybe call a sick day or whatever. A woman, however, if she is in a C-level position or even a managerial position, she will come into work pissed, upset, or indifferent and will hide that emotion while still processing that emotion in her head while dealing with customers, while dealing with her employees, and on top of that, never miss a dime on her, one of her cash registers. So I have seen this happen. However, I have also seen the flip side where there, is, there was a woman who I worked with and she broke down every single day and had to go home every single day. But they never fired her because she's disabled, so they get extra money from her. Welcome to corporate America. But I have seen both sides of the story of where women can either be just like men and have mental breakdowns every single freaking day, or they can be strong and have a mental breakdown inside their head while also still uh, being able to uh, allow all of that to process and click instantly and still being able to work without having any downtime, really. And that, I think, is absolutely fabulous and amazing, and I think that men really should understand that and instead of having our two separate worlds theories of where we have our home life and our work life, we need to slap them together and realize that our home life can be our work life and that our work life can be our home life. Um, I, d I don't feel that that's uh, an issue. But no, I do not believe that men and women have the same emotional strength. I believe that women do consistently have a much higher 
uh, emotional strength because they can hide it and work with it at the same time. Uh, I do not think the, uh, the responsibility of man to uh, protect a woman physically. I think that I would like to protect my wife or girlfriend, but I don't feel that if, you know, like she knew how to protect herself or wanted to protect herself, I, and I wasn't there, I wouldn't be butthurt because I didn't, I couldn't protect her. But I do, I do kind of think that it's like my responsibility and it's like my job to be there for her. Um, I believe that uh, men and women should be equally encouraged to express their emotions. Hell yes. Um, I never asked a woman why she does not have children. Um, well, all the women that I've ever dated, I would not want to ask why they hadn't, why they don't have children. So no, I have never asked a woman. I would be equally excited to have a son or a daughter. Yeah, that would be fine with me. Um, a son would be a dick to have, though. <laughs> I think the American workplace culture is not often, or is often not structured in a way that is helpful or encouraging to women succeeding. That is true because most of the C-level operatives in uh, American workplace culture are men, and it's hard to get forward unless you do that switch in your brain where you go, oh, I'm, you know, I have now, I'm going to display the two worlds theory where I am just going to be, you know, this straightforward, I'm going to deal with, you know, my work, my work life separately than my home life. I don't talk about that with my coworkers and I don't talk about it with my boss. And on top of that, I am always on time. I am always working. I usually create faster and easier ways for the work to be done and I always take credit for my work. I don't care who else wants to take credit for it. I always take credit for my work and I think that everyone needs to understand that. So yes, I think that American culture is structured for having men succeed instead of women. I think women have, an e have a responsibility to help and encourage other women to pursue their goals. I think that everyone needs to uh, help and to has a responsibility to help and encourage other people to do to pursue their goals. I don't think that it's just the responsibility of men and women. I think that it's everyone needs to talk to everyone else and stop sh you know stop shutting people down just because they have different thoughts. Um, so no, I'm not going to check that. I think that women are equally capable, yes, but it'll never happen because of the society that we live in today. Um, I believe that women have no responsibility to make a uh, conscious effort to always be friendly and polite. No, I, I mean, if, if a woman wants to be a dick to me, let her be a dick. I don't care. Um, I've never criticized uh, a woman for not wearing makeup or wearing too much makeup. Uh, I have. And I do not regret it because that woman was a slut. So, no. And I say slut in the literal term. She was someone I went to school with and she had slept with four or five people. Now, I can say that men are the same way. I don't care. It's just, don't do this. Don't do that, I guess I should say. Okay, so, sh uh, uh, oh, um... Uh, I believe a uh, woman is a woman, if that, no, no. Um, you're pretty woke and try to stay. <laughs> oh, I think, I think bearing answer 22 out of 50. Um, so no, I actually, I apparently am not a feminist. Um, but maybe I am not, not a feminist, but an equalist, equalist. Equalist. Okay. Maybe I'm an equalist, not a feminist. But maybe that's what we all should be. Instead of focusing on hashtag Black Lives Matter, maybe it should be hashtag All Lives Matter. Maybe instead of hashtag Feminism Rocks, it should be Everyone Rocks. Maybe we should stop worrying about genders and start worrying about ourselves. Improving ourselves so that we can then improve the rest of the world. Because without us being in check, we can never help each other. So this has been a little, you know, 
thought experiment for me. I hope that you liked this very long video, 35 minutes now going, damn, holy hell. Um, but I do hope that you liked this, and I hope that it gave you some insight into my psyche. Because, I, I don't know. Uh, I have different thoughts than other people, and that's okay. We are all human, and we all should have different thoughts. And that's okay if we have different thoughts. So, at the end of the day, what do you think? Tell me your answers in the comments down below, and like this video if you liked it, and dislike it if you disliked it. I know I said that I wouldn't be doing much other um, quote-unquote controversial topics, but I do feel that this is something that needed to be addressed by someone who isn't for or against feminism. I am a neutralist. I try and stay on the neutral side and look at both sides and then smack them both upside the head and tell them to shut the fuck up and go home. As I was raised. I was raised to stay neutral and then smack both parties with the fucking facts. So if you want to smack people with the facts, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And at the end of this video, there will be two um, over over here. Um, or, no, over here, I think. I would, Again, I always get the cameras confused. Um, it's going to be on one of the sides. Uh, it's going to be two videos. The most recent video that I've ever uploaded. And on top of that, it's going to be a video that YouTube automatically recommends from me for you. So... If you uh, want to check that out, that's cool. And in the bottom corner, it will have the subscribe option. So thank you again for watching. I'll see you all next time. Peace. <laughs>